I'm going to talk with you some about, it's a combination of creativity, divine intelligence, and hope solutions. But for me, this is all brought together as well, though, in about the seven spirits of God. So, Father, thank you for this time right now. And I'm asking for your help to be able to articulate as well as that there will be an impartation for creativity. An impartation for an invitation into divine intelligence. And an invitation then for hope solutionist to arrive on the earth scene. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's look at a theme verse, which many of you know. It comes from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. Now, this is, before we read this, this is a messianic prophecy. So, in other words, Isaiah the prophet is looking into the future, and he starts prophesying about the Lamb of God. He starts prophesying about this one in whom there will be no limitation of the realm of the Holy Spirit. And he mentions seven dimensions or seven expressions, or it is later, it is used the word actual spirit, seven spirits of God that will rest upon the Messiah. But then this is not only then exclusively about the Messiah as a prophecy. It is also then because it is referenced in the book of Revelation three or four different times. So it is also then, it is prophetic historical in first reference about Yeshua, Jesus himself, but it is also then about the body of the Messiah of Jesus because where does Jesus live? In the new creation, Jesus lives in us. So if this prophecy in its precedent is about Jesus, then if Jesus lives in us, then that means it is also about us. That's pretty simple, but it's very important to grasp. So when we look at this in its origin, realize that when we're looking at this prophecy about the Messiah, we are also looking about the Messiah in us. That's really important. So let's look at this, and they might be able to put this verse up on the screen. Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from the roots will bear fruit. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. And the Spirit of the Lord. Now notice it says, and the Spirit. And watch this. It says, and the Spirit of the Lord. For a long time, I've actually pondered and prayed into this for a few decades, okay? I'm going to be 69 in, um, I don't know, what is it? Oh, my goodness. I think it's about two weeks from now, okay? Okay, so, and so listen to this. this it says the Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. That's number one. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, now look at this, and the fear of the Lord, and say that with me, and the fear of the Lord. So when you count these, there are seven different spirits that are specifically listed here. Let's do it again. And the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, number one. The spirit of wisdom, number two, and understanding. The spirit of counsel, number four, and might. Another translation will say strength or power. But it is actually talking about a stamina, physical strength. 
energy, might, and the spirit of the Lord. One, the spirit of wisdom. Two, the spirit of understanding, living understanding. The spirit of counsel, the spirit of strength and might. The spirit of supernatural knowledge. This is not talking about informational knowledge. This is talking about a dimension of a spirit of God that imparts supernatural knowledge. Oh, okay. You know what I've got to do? And I know I have limitation of time. But with the understanding that this is supernatural dimensions, the spirit of supernatural lordship, where it isn't just up to you, it isn't only up to only your decision making, although that's extraordinarily important, but where the help of the Holy Spirit helps you to walk in supernatural lordship. Not that you're Lord, he's Lord. And you then will walk in a spirit of supernatural wisdom. How many want to walk in supernatural wisdom? See, now I, okay, now it's not that I got you, but it doesn't, now, now, now you're on the page, okay? I'm talking about creativity. I'm talking about divine intelligence. I'm talking about hope solutionist in the last days. How are, how's that going to happen? It's because the seven supernatural spirits of God are resting on them like they've rested on the Messiah. The supernatural spirit of the Lord will rest upon him so they rest upon them. The supernatural spirit of wisdom that like rested on Solomon, that's rested on Jesus, will rest upon the body of the Messiah of Jesus. The supernatural spirit of understanding that gives you revelatory understanding that goes beyond your academia. And you know things that goes into knowledge, that you understand the times and the seasons and you're able to discern them and you understand realms. I'm, and we do study to show ourselves approved to be a workman unto God. But the supernatural spirit of wisdom, a supernatural spirit of understanding. I seek the Lord to understand the WWW. God has had a WWW before there ever was a World Wide Web. And it is the Word, the will, and the ways of God. I've been crying out to God for the Un supernatural understanding of the W, W, W. <laughs> and it's not the worldwide wrestlers. Or maybe it is. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spirits of wickedness in heavenly places. Mm, maybe God's had that one covered too. Okay, moving on. Okay, now. The, spirit of the, the supernatural spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. A supernatural spirit of wisdom and understanding, number three. A supernatural spirit of counsel and might, number five. That is strength. That is like what came upon Elijah when that guy had worked his tail off. And then he gives this word. And he says, by the way, it's going to rain so hard. And it starts a downpour. And the supernatural spirit of strength comes upon him and he outruns the chariots. 
and he gets to the destination even before the chariot riders do. That is supernatural. That was the supernatural spirit of might and strength that came upon Elijah. Then there is the supernatural spirit of knowledge. And you know things. And you come into a dimension. And you do study. And you do cultivate good skill sets. Daniel, we are going to turn there. But Daniel chapter 1. I've studied, I've been captivated by the life of Daniel. A young man of excellent character. Even in his way that he ate, his health. In his case... He did not go to Hebrew University, which I think is interesting. He couldn't because he was a refugee. In a foreign land of Babylon. So he went to what was called the school of the Chaldeans. Risky stuff. He said, don't go there. He did. It says that he was learned, when you study Daniel chapter 1, in every form of literature. Folks, sometimes we are too afraid to get learned, to get taught. My oldest daughter in growing up from knowing a certain dimension of knowledge from the Lord, the Holy Spirit told me that she was going to need all of these initials behind her name for her to be able to fulfill God's calling upon her life. And he literally would give me understand understanding that she would go to the best of the, like the school of the Chaldeans of our time. So she ended up, and I had, you know, I got to do this uh, a very quick, short version. So she ended up, you know, with a, you know, a bachelor's degree from Belmont University in, in Nashville, you know, and like in fine arts and things of that nature and uh, maybe a minor in photography or something of that, uh, that uh, realm. And then she uh, applied for her uh, master's at the Art Institute in Chicago, which is one of possibly the top three art institutes in the world. Now, but she applied for art therapy now, art therapy is still a rather new field of study. And that is one of the leading institutes. Now, it's growing, okay? It's a growing field. But that is one of the leading institutions in the world. Uh, and so if you get a degree from there, it carries a certain realm of clout. But that is going to a school like other Chaldeans. I didn't choose it, she did. It's a long story. But they didn't, it, I'm not talking about applications, but there was something like auditions of around 180 auditions where they did group therapy, group things, dynamics. Now these were students that were the best from all over the world. They only chose 18. I'm talking about the best from all over the world. At least it was a, might have been 220, let's say it was 180, not applications, but from the applications that they chose to, that they flow in, they flew in for auditions. And so she was one of 18 that was chosen from all over the world for the program. And she graduated, you know, with honors. And, and so today she is an art therapy professor 
and a managing director of the National Photography Group and multiple other things, and a wife and a mother of three, and she helps me as my media director in the, my ministry and things of that nature, and so she's a multitasker. But the Lord told me when she was yay high that she would need all of these initials behind her name to be able to do what it would be in her lifetime. And I don't still think that she's I think she's only beginning to do what it is that she's going to do. But it's sometimes we do need doormats, a welcome mat to be able to get through certain doors. And then there is the X factor. Then there is the other dimension that goes beyond and it is the supernatural dimension. It is, then it is the supernatural spirit of knowledge. Then it is the supernatural spirit of wisdom. And then it is the supernatural, right? And so I'm not saying one is a replacement for the other because in Daniel's case, he went to the school of the Chaldeans. It says that he was learned. Listen to this. In every form of literature. So it's like, oh my goodness, I wonder what all that guy studied and he read. Then listen to this. Depending upon the translation, it says, and it says he was learned in every form of literature. It's in the first chapter of Daniel. And then it says this, and God gave him. Say, and God gave him. Oh, this now is the other realm, and God gave him. This not, is not now his information. This now is not just what he studied. It's, this is, and God gave him. Now, he did all he could, and then God gave him. One translation says it's extraordinary. And God gave him divine intelligence. Oh, I want that. When I was a child, little, little boy growing up, somehow or another, the Holy Spirit deposited in me three prayers in growing up. One. God, give me wisdom beyond my years, like Solomon. Now, how did I get that? I don't really know. Except, I, I think it was a little bit of maybe an imprint from like a Sunday school teacher or something. You know? I, I really, I, I've never been able to figure out how I got this, except that God put it in me. But I prayed this as a child. I prayed it in my teens. I prayed it in my 20s. I prayed it in my 30s. I prayed it in my 40s, my 50s, my 60s. And I was like, next year I turn 70, and I'm going to be praying it in my 70s. And it was, God, give me wisdom beyond my years. My next prayer. What was it? What is it? Okay, <laughs> okay. Lord, give me wisdom beyond my years. Lord, give me purity to keep me from the evil way. That's a good one. Teach your kids. Pray that one, grandparents, over your grandkids. And then I would pray, Lord, raise up your Joseph counselors to those in authority. Those were my three prayers. Lord, give me wisdom beyond my years. Lord, give me a heart of purity to keep me from the evil way. And Lord, raise up your Joseph counselors like Joseph and Daniel to those in authority. So this is part of the reason. This right now, I could talk with you probably about 10 hours at least on this subject. Because this is a part of my life. I've been praying into this. I've been chewing on this. I've been eating on this for a while. Not only did I pray those three prayers as a child, I prayed these in my teenage years. Those prayers kept me. Lord, give me a heart of purity to keep me from the evil way. 
Do you know that you need to pray those when you're 30, not just when you're uh, 16? Yeah.